My name is Jennifer Schulp, and I am the Director of Financial Regulation Studies at the Cato Institute Center for Monetary and Financial Alternatives. Thank you for the opportunity to take part in today's hearing. Before addressing the GameStop phenomenon specifically, I'd like to talk about the participation of retail or individual investors in our public equities markets. Retail participation has ebbed and flowed over the years, but the recent upward trend accelerated sharply during the pandemic. Most point to zero commission trading, but several other factors also likely attracted retail investors, including fractional share trading, low account minimums, and easy app-based platforms. More time at home during the pandemic probably even played a role. Retail participation in our equities markets is important. The fact that retail investors behave differently from institutional ones and differently from each other can be particularly valuable in times of market stress. In fact, individual investors may have helped stabilize the market in March 2020. Importantly, investing in the stock market also provides a path to wealth for individual investors. But stock ownership traditionally has been skewed towards the already wealthy, and it is highly correlated with race, education, and age. Retail investors making up this new surge are different. Recent research by the FINRA Investor Education Foundation and NORC at the University of Chicago found that investors who opened accounts for the first time in 2020 were younger, had lower incomes, and were more racially diverse. These new investors also held lower account balances. This may portend, as one of the researchers noted, quote, a shift towards more equitable investment participation. These new opportunities for individuals to grow their wealth should be welcomed and expanded, not restricted. Now I'll turn to GameStop. Um, at the outset, I will note that it is difficult to analyze the impact of the trading in GameStop and other stocks because many facts are unknown. But some things seem clear. Importantly, the temporary volatility in these stocks did not present a systemic risk to market function. As the Treasury Department recognized, the market's, quote, core infrastructure was resilient during high volatility and heavy trading volume. This is not surprising. Despite the huge trading volume and rapid increase in value, only a small part of the market was affected, and spillover effects on the wider market were mild and short-lived. The fact that GameStop traded temporarily, and perhaps still trades above fair estimates of the company's value, is not, by itself, a reason for concern. Stock prices move in and out of alignment all the time, and markets are no strangers to bubbles. If a company is valued by the market differently than a review of its fundamentals suggests, it might indicate that the analysis is missing relevant information about a company's prospects, or it might indicate that the company's stock price is due for a correction. The market's mechanisms, including the tool of short selling, generally work well to handle these circumstances. Stepping in to prevent trading where a stock price moves contrary to conventional wisdom could deprive the market of important informa information. The SEC, among a host of others, is reviewing the relevant trading and conducting a study of the events. The SEC will have access to far more information than has been made publicly available, and I believe it has the tools necessary to address any harmful misconduct that may have occurred. I cannot opine on whether any regulatory changes are warranted on this incomplete record. I tend to believe the answer will be no in light of the minimal impact on the market's function. But as regulators learn more, there may be areas identified for improvement. By no means, though, should these events lead to restrictions on retail investors' access to the markets. Thank you, and I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Shaw.